Hello, welcome back to your theory one. So we are now on module six, which is the cables and arches. And in unit one, we will be starting with cables. So in this unit, this is our unit learning outcome. First is to analyze cables which are subjected to concentrated loads. And second is to analyze cables subjected to uniformly distributed loads. So first, let's try to, this, to uh, understand what is cable. Okay. So cables are often used in engineering structures for support and to transmit loads from one member to another. So in the force system of such, uh, in the analysis of such force system, the weight of the cable itself may be neglected. Okay. So cable, if we are talking about cable, for example, the actual, the actual uh, examples are cable cars. Okay. Cable cars, uh, radio antennas with cables, of course, as a guide. And then at the same time, uh, we could have this suspension bridge. Okay. This is the common type of the application of cable structures. So, in the force analysis of such system, the weight of the cable itself may be neglected. Okay. However, when cables are used as guides for radio antennas, electrical transmission lines, and the like, the cable weight may be become important and must be included in the analysis. So, actually, that depends on the function of your cable. So if the weight of your cable is negligible compared to the force uh, acted on it or the weight carried by the tension or the uh, cable itself, then we can consider it as negligible. But if that is, for example, just like this one, okay, uh, it is a transmission, it is a line for the uh, cable cars, then it is necessary for us, okay, it's important for us to include the weight of the cable itself because that is one of the main forces. Okay, uh, that is carried by the cable itself, its own weight. So that depends on the use of the cable, and then it, de it depends, of course, on the uh, to this one. It depends on the decision of the one designing the cable structure if the weight should be included or not. Okay, so again, that depends on the significance of the weight compared to the total load carried. So when, okay, when the when deriving the necessary relations between the force in the cable and its slope cables, okay, in its slope cables are assumed to be inextensible and perfectly flexible. So in deriving formulas or equations uh, relating, of course, the forces with the geometry of the cable itself, then we will always assume, okay, or it is always assumed that the cable are inextensible. If you say inextensible, it is assumed to have a constant length. Okay, even after the loading, it's still assumed that the length is constant. And then perfectly flexible. Okay, perfectly flexible in such a way that the cable offers no resistance to shear or bending, which is true because the cable cannot resist a moment and cannot resist a shear within a point. Okay, on the cable, because cable is known to resist only tensile forces, even compression forces. The cable cannot resist the comp compression forces due to its flexibility. Okay? Flexibility. So again, therefore, tensile force acting on the cable is always tangent to the cable at points along its length. So again, uh, due to the reason that the cable is, is inextensible and perfectly flexible, or due to the flexibility, we can always assume that the tensile force is acting tangent to the to any any points within the cable along its length. Why? Because of course if we are talking about tensile force here, the force is actually perpendicular to the cross section. So if you will cut even the uh, for example in this application of cables, the uh, or the orientation or the geometry of the cable is actually not a straight line. Okay? It will now be actually a curved line. But if we are dealing with tension or the tensile force that is actually always tangent to the point. Let's say that is the point, then all you need to cut that one, and then the tensile force is always tangent to that or perpendicular to that, that means it will always be tangent to the axis or to the curve of the cable itself. So that is uh, for the cable. So these are some of the applications, but actually there are a lot. So let's start with the cable subjected to concentrated loads. So this is an example figure for that. Okay, for example, we have a cable 
initially okay unloaded cable will be uh, within this length okay initially okay for example okay. and then uh, once you will uh, be loading that one there will be reflections and so on and so forth and then we will be having now this shape okay so this is an example of a cable loaded with concentrated loads okay well, uh, an actual example of that is actually this uh, cable cars okay one example of cables loaded with concentrated loads are this cable car okay or is this cable car since your cable car your car itself or your bucket itself is the one represented or that is where the concentrated load is coming from and however however of course in the actual scenario your concentrated load is moving but still the analysis of that includes here on the cable subjected to concentrated loads so when the cable of negligible weight supports several concentrated loads the cable takes the form of several straight line segments so again due to the concentrated loads uh, your cables will be stretched in such a manner that okay for example considering your weight of the cable okay is negligible compared to of course the weight it is, it is carrying then we can actually consider that as almost or the, the actual scenario will be almost straight line segments however we can approximate that one of course for simplicity of uh, calculations we can assume that one or approximate that one as straight lines okay again if your cable's weight is negligible compared to the weights it is carrying and then uh, if the system is determined based on a given and unknowns it is analyzed by simply using the equations of equilibrium so this type of uh, cable okay loaded cable is actually solvable by mainly equations of equilibrium if of course uh, dealing with determinate structure okay De dealing with the uh, structure based on the given and unknowns we can decide if that is determinate or not or if we can solve by mainly equations of equilibrium then that is determinate so again that depends on the scenario of the cable since uh, however this is your theory one so we will focus solely on the analysis of determinate structures so we will be expecting in the examples later on determinate structures which are all so solvable by equations of equilibrium okay so if we will try to proceed okay determine the tensile force okay let, this will be your example one determine the tensile force in each segment and the unknown dimension of the cable shown in the figure calculate the reaction at its support okay so this is our cable structure okay or this is the cable system and we have here at joint b or at point b uh, we, cannot, we cannot call that one joint because of course a cable is assumed to be continuous of course okay so uh, at point b we can how we can see the here that we have the concentrated load of three kilonewtons and at point c we have a concentrated load of eight kilonewtons and then the problem is suggesting for us to or requiring for us to solve the tensile force in each of the segment okay in each of the segment a b b c and c d and then of course uh, the uh, the unknown dimension which is the h here in the figure and then finally calculate the reaction here in the supports so as you can see later on okay uh, if we will try to analyze this one there are two re two reactions here two reactions however okay by mere by merely uh, looking at the external indeterminacy it seems that your reactions is more than three so it means that it's more than the available equations of equilibrium however since there are points where we can consider we can uh, cut that one at the point and then uh, satisfy equilibrium those are now additional additional equations so that makes it determinate okay so first is for us to cut the cable okay so first uh, let's try to solve whatever we can solve first okay by going back here as you can see of course there are four unknowns on the reaction so we cannot solve directly the reaction first however if we can just cut okay uh, this is of course by means of your uh, judgment where you will start where you can uh, calculate first of the unknown and then uh, succeedingly proceed to other scenario where you can calculate the others okay so first is to cut the cable just after joint c okay uh, let's say for example let's go back to the original 
I want actually if I want to calculate directly a force, okay, if you want to calculate directly a force or the tensile force within the segment, actually you can cut some anywhere. You can cut anywhere. Okay? Say so cut some here within A B, within D C, within C D, you will expose only one unknown, which is good. Okay, let's say I will cut somewhere here between B and C. And then let's say I will consider left side or right side and take a moment at A so that I will cancel out the unknown reactions. Then I will only have a one unknown, which is the tensile force within the cut section I consider. So that makes it solvable, okay? So it's up to you how you will deal with this, but for us, okay, let me cut that one just after joint C. Okay, of course, try to cut the section within the point for in you know the distances, of course, because later on you will be taking a moment, you need to know the moment arm or the uh, distance of the forces to be used as the moment arm. So let me cut that one just after, just after joint C. So that means the location of that point is almost, or that is considered still as the location of C. Because I will just be cutting that one just after joint C. So I will now be considering the left side. Okay, this is not the left side. Of course, so what are the other unknowns? You have there the horizontal and vertical reactions of support A. However, if I want to take a moment at A, then that that cancels out the two unknowns. So that left that uh, left us only your tension at the uh, segment C D. Okay. However, of course, if we will be taking a moment of A later on, then we need to know the moment arm of this. However, due to the inclination of that, I do not know. Okay, or we do not know the perpendicular distance. So, it is safe for us to break this down into components, horizontal and vertical, since there are given distances which will be later on utilized as the moment arm. Okay, however, okay, we cannot again break this down without knowing the slopes or even the angle if that's what you want to use but for me I, I'd rather use the slope but going back again to the figure our uh, dimension for this inclined segment is horizontal 1.5 and a vertical of 2 which will be reduced you can divide this by 0.5 so this will be 3 this will be 4 and then of course we will be having now the known a slope triangle which is 3 4 5 okay given a 3 4 uh, rise and run you can calculate the hypotenuse 5. So that is now a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So that is what I will be using. So therefore, if I were to break this down into components, okay, this is sloping upwards. So we will expect a going up vertical component and going to the right horizontal component. Therefore, taking a moment at A, that going up component, which is 4 fifth of TCD, will be, okay, let me assume counterclockwise positive. So that is a counterclockwise, so it is a positive. And then the moment arm of that will be the perpendicular distance, which is 2 plus 2, a total of 4. And then one more thing is the uh, other component, the horizontal, which is uh, a counterclockwise still with respect to A. So that is positive, so that is 3 fifth of your TCD. And then the moment arm, perpendicular distance is 4 meters still. And then of course we have other forces to take a moment with is your 3 which is now a counter, so that makes it a negative, and moment arm is 2, and then you 8, which is also a counter, and the moment arm is a total of 4. And now that is now simple algebra, only one unknown, so we only need one equation, which is this. So if we will try to simplify, this will become a constant, a constant, which will be added together. This will go on the other side, and then divide it, whatever is the coefficient of your TCD, then that gives us exactly 95 over 14. That is the exact value, but if you want to use the decimal, you can round this off to 6.79, which is kilonewtons. Kilonewtons in such a way because we are using, or we started with the force, which is in kilonewtons. So expected our tensile force CD is also kilonewton. And then, uh, that is not what we can solve within this section, actually, since there are three unknowns. Then if I will now try to solve this too, I can actually solve AB, since that is the only unknown if I will submit vertical. Let's say going up vertical, then what are you vertical? Your component TCD, uh, by the way we calculated TCD to be positive, so again, means tension which is supposed to be, because again, uh, cables cannot carry a compression. But if, in case you end up in a negative, maybe uh, there is something wrong or 
your model is not applicable for the type of loading. Okay. So now some main vertical going up positive and then that is going up component of TCD. So positive for fifth. And then AB is going up also and then we have these two forces going down so they are both negative. And then since we know your TCD, let me use the exact value, okay? So substitute it here and then simplify you will have AB to be 39 over 7. Or in decimal you can round this off to 5.57 kilonewtons and then also your AH so this is to be calculated by summation horizontal and then of course as we can see there are no other horizontal forces except the component of your TCD which is the 3 fourth I mean 3 fifth of that TCD so let's say going to the right is positive so this is positive AH should be negative and then uh, substitute and simplify you will have 57 over 14 or in decimal that is 4.07 kilonewtons and then now, um, we already calculated the reactions at A and then of course your tension at CD. There are four more unknowns, okay, we will go back. The tension, AB, BC, and then of course the two more reactions. So, I already know CD and the reactions here, so actually I can consider your C, joint C only, evaluate or satisfy equilibrium I will now be solving the member BC or the segment BC so that is what I will be doing next considering the joint C or point C okay then uh, we have here we know that TCD is already calculated a while ago and that with the slope of 3 4 5 however your BC okay if we will go back to BC okay BC your point B is actually not located Okay, that is actually one of the unknown, the location of point B. So we do not know yet, the, uh, we cannot establish the slope triangle of this. Or we cannot establish or we cannot calculate the angle of that. So what I will be doing at joint C is just to summate the resultant breakdown and then whatever reaction or whatever resultant, then that will be the reaction which will be carried by your uh, segment BC or CB. Okay, so again. Consider that your CB will be the, react, the, the support or yes, the one receiving the reaction or the excess. Since your CD is already known, we can apply that one as a force and you have there the 8 kN force. Then if you will try to summate horizontal vertical, you will have the excess which will be the one carried by the uh, vertical and horizontal component of BC. So first, let me assume that BC is a tension. So the, the component of that is going up and to the left. Okay, so let's uh, call it as T sub CB dash B for the vertical component and then T sub CB dash H for the horizontal component of your tensile within the segment CB or that is the same as BC. And let me indicate here your theta CB. Okay, let's say that is the slope of the segment BC or CB from horizontal. Okay, so if you will try to submit vertical, then okay, again by the way you, you can you can now forget about TCB since that is actually breakdown into its vertical and horizontal component. So if I will be summating horizontal and vertical, I will be using this component instead of this angle and TCB. So if I will submit vertical, let's say going up positive, your TCB component going up is of course positive, that is for fifth. And then your vertical component of uh, I mean this is CD, okay of your CB is also positive and then of course uh, we have here going down so negative so negative 8 and then of course uh, substitute what we know which is TCD and simplify your TCB dash B that is the vertical component of your CB or BC which is 18 over 7 I will be using still the uh, exact value as much as possible if I can have that a simple number okay or in decimal that is 2.57 that is just the vertical uh, in case we know the angle then we do not need to solve the horizontal since uh, of course you can use trigonometry using the angle and the vertical component to calculate the resultant or which is the actual value however we do not know both the resultant and the angle or in the inclination so we cannot do that therefore I will be solving the horizontal component by submitting horizontal right is positive so component of TCD is going to the right, so that makes it positive 3 over 5, 
TCD and then of course this is going to the left the uh, unknown TCD dash H so it makes it negative substitute TCD simplify you will have 57 over 14 which is in decimal 4.07 okay now we know the components and of course uh, going back to your uh, tri triangular okay or uh, force triangle method in your physics or in your uh, mechanics in your rigid bodies then we can relate the component with the uh, resultant by uh, Pythagorean theorem okay you can relate that one by Pythagorean theorem okay then you can say that the hypotenuse or the resultant since this will uh, be going on the other side it will make it as a right triangle so this, this will serve as a hypotenuse so that will be the hypotenuse equals the square root of the square of both legs so what are the legs these are the vertical and horizontal and then our hypotenuse is the unknown tensile at cd so substitute the vertical okay let me use the whole number again or the exact value and then the horizontal substitute these values and then get the square and summate and get the square root you will have okay uh, our value here is actually a little bit complicated since the exact value has a square root so let me now round this off directly to second decimal so that gives us 4.82 so that is our tensile for segment cd or dc okay and then of course actually since if we will try to consider the uh, orientation of your member or your segment dc we can actually imagine here a right triangle with its dimension 2 and then the rise which is also 2 i mean uh, no no not 2 because of course we do not know that one this is h if this is h then we know that that is a total of 4 so the remaining going down is 4 minus h so i have here my right triangle which is actually defining your segment bc a horizontal run of 2 meters and a vertical of again as i explained a while ago that will become 4 minus h and then of course this is your angle cd slope from horizontal and that is the same here of course and then by uh, trigonometry from this right triangle that we created we can actually calculate your h since we can calculate theta cb basing on the of course horizontal and vertical component of your tcb okay using these values we can calculate your angle cb however since that is not unknown we do not need to so actually i can just do uh, I can I can do equate the slope okay so the slope of the force is the same as the slope of the segment of course since that is uh, tangent as we as we said before that is always tangent so it means it belongs to a single line so the slope or that is the tangent CB which is the same as this in this uh, scenario here where that is the, uh, the the action of the force the tangent will be the vertical over the horizontal which is tcb h uh, i mean tcb v over tcb h and that will be equal to tangent cb in this right triangle which is the opposite and then hypotenuse so that is 4 minus h over 2 i mean no, not hypotenuse sorry for that uh opposite and adjacent okay that is tangent so opposite and adjacent so if we cannot forget this side since this is actually what we are after okay you know TCBV and then TCBH, substitute that one. And then the only unknown is H, so we can play around with that. You can have the equation of H as okay, 4 minus 2 times this quantity TCBV over TCBH. Substitute what we know. Okay, let me use the exact values since we have that one. And then calculate, you will have 52 over, 8, over 19. Okay, the exact value for the height H is 52 over 19. Or in decimal that is 2.74 so actually by merely using this one we can solve already another unknown h since actually that is one of the that is one of the unknown uh, unknown dimension okay now okay going back to the original figure if we will go back to the original figure so we know this unknown we know the reaction here we know the tensile we know the tensile that leads us three the tensile a b and the reaction at b Okay, so actually you can get you can uh, get the tensile AB at this at this point. Okay, but I think it would be better for us to use this one. Okay, 
and at the same time making use of this point I can check later on the value of h okay without relating to our value here a while ago but still you can get your tensile a b from this point for us let me consider support a okay or joint a so joint a okay what what are the forces acting on that is the horizontal and vertical and calculated vertical to be going up and horizontal to be going to the left so uh, let me assume that one okay as your tensile a b and then again since we do not know Okay, actually we already know the H, so we can establish this law, but let's say we do not know yet the H, so that let's try to solve the A, T, A, B at the same time H, to check our H a while ago, okay? So let's forget that we know about H, so let's say that we do not know yet the slope of that. So let's say that the angle A, B is from the vertical, so first uh, creating a right triangle which is uh, the orientation of A, B. We have the dimension H vertical and that is again horizontal distance AB is 2 meters. So again, summating vertical, first is for us to get the vertical component of AB. So going up AB, going down AB, AB dash B, I mean, and there are no other four, so they will be equal. So 39 over 7, or that's 5.7. And in summating horizontal, there are no other forces again, so your EH is the same as T A B dash H, so which is 54 over 7, oh, I mean 57 over 14, in decimal 4.07. So now we know the vertical horizontal component, again by Pythagorean theorem of triangular force system, okay. We will evaluate and we will have 6.9 kilonewtons as the tensile A B. Again, uh, again, we already know H, but let's try to recalculate as a way of checking. So from this triangle, okay, the right triangle, let's try to check H. So relating this uh, 2 and the unknown H, and then of course that together with the vertical and horizontal component of AB, let me say, okay, uh, actually we can use tangent, but for me I want to use cotangent, okay? Because in cotangent, I will be putting this uh, adjacent on the top. But it's up to you, okay, you can, you can do tangent also. So let's say cotangent, so that, that gives us uh, adjacent over opposite. So first is for this uh, component, we have the uh, adjacent to be the vertical and then the opposite to be the horizontal and then in this triangle, the adjacent is H, opposite is 2. Playing around with that, your H will be 2 times this value here, substituting this value and let me use the exact value again, substituting that, calculating H to be 52 over 19 or in decimal that is 2.74 which is exactly the same as our value calculated a while ago at joint C okay so that gives us the confidence of our value of H okay. that gives us the confidence for the value of H and now that lets us the only unknown the support reaction at B okay so let me consider the whole figure since we know everything and actually we do not need this uh, tensile to calculate the reaction since we already know two of that so summit horizontal or let's say vertical first AB and DB let's assume DB to be, to be going up first so AB and DB are going up so they are positive and then the loads are going down so negative and we know AB to be 39 over 7 and calculating DB that will be almost equal okay look at the values they are almost equal However, this is a little bit smaller. Okay, your 39 over 7 is actually, I guess that is, okay, to try to go back. In decimal, the equivalent of that is 5.57. Okay, 5.57. But for the dB, that is 5.43. And in summit horizontal, there are no other, lo other loads for us to summit. So, AB is automatically equal to the H. By, by of course, by your... Uh, observation you can see that one so you can actually you can actually uh, equate that already as 54 57 over 14 57 over 14 and that is in decimal 4.07 kilonewtons okay 4.07 kilonewtons so this is now the uh, outline or the yes outline of our example one your Re your support reactions are these values, okay, so as you can see, the horizontal AH will be cancelled out by the DH. 
this vertical will be supporting the total of 11 kilometers going down and then as you can see these are now the 10 sign so based on the values okay we will try to uh, analyze your tcd is 6.79 your tbc is 4.82 and then your tab is 6.9 so actually we can relate these two look at this okay uh, why is it that tbc is smaller or less stressed than tab or the ab is more stressed than bc because if you try to analyze this one let's say try to cut a section here your bc and cd are merely uh, carrying 8 kilonewtons and actually the difference of these values is brought due to the, the difference in the slope so of course that means that uh, due to the of course at the same time not, not just the slope but at the same time the length of the segment however since uh, we do not need to compare these two uh, what I want to compare is this uh, BC and AB so if I will try to cut here again your BC is just carrying a part of 8 kilonewtons. Now if I will try to cut somewhere here, your AB, as you can see, will be carrying a part of 8 kilonewtons and at the same time your 3 kilonewtons. So that makes your segment AB more stressed compared to BC. Okay, so that is the outline of the results. So we have the reactions, we have the unknown dimension 2.74. And at the same time, we have the tensor forces. Okay. So, we can now proceed to the other uh, scenario of cable, wherein that is loaded to a uniformly distributed load. Okay. So, uniformly distributed load. So, by the way, there are two types of uniformly distributed load cable, uh, loaded with a uniformly distributed load cable. Uh, one is a cable loaded with its uh, own weight only actually we call that one catenary but actually that will not be covered in this video i will not be covering that one within this video rather i will only be covering the cable loaded with uniformly distributed load which is an external okay an external uniformly distributed load so in this discussion let's uh, first assume that the weight is not considered okay since again, the weight is not uh, distributed horizontally, since as you can see, the load is actually, uh, if the load that you're talking about is the soft weight, the soft weight is now distributed with respect to the length. So that will now be a different discussion, which will be a, the catenary, the catenary cables. Okay, so actually this scenario here is uh, almost the application, or I mean almost a model for the application of suspension bridge okay suspension bridges since we have this cable here which is supporting a deck okay which is supporting a deck and then of course uh the load from the deck is transferred to the cable due to these hangers this is what we call or these are what we call the hangers so a typical example of the system is a suspension bridge so again this, this might be a suspension bridge in which the deck is uh, suspended by the cable using a series of closed and equally spaced hangers okay by the way if you will be asking me uh, how is that a uniformly distributed load well in fact the application of load to the cable cable is by means of the hangers so if you will try to consider the actual scenario that is actually a series of concentrated loads which is spaced equally however since uh, again in actual scenario the hangers are spaced closely and then equally so actually the application of the loads is distributed okay it is distributed almost within a small lens of the cable so we can assume that one as uniformly distributed okay for simplicity so again uh, that, that makes it uh, uniformly distributed so the question is okay now uh, what should be the shape of this the actual shape of that, again, okay, might be a straight line from hammer to hammer. But again, since those straight lines, uh, assuming that your hammers are very closely spaced, then that makes it, if we will connect that small straight lines, that makes it curve. Okay? Uh, but later on, let's try to decide what type of curve is that, okay, based on the equation that we will be establishing. Okay? Uh, but first, 
the tensile forces at a point will indicable increase increases as its distance from the lowest point increases also. So just like my explanation a while ago, okay, let's say this is the lowest point. If you will try to cut a section, a horizontal section, at these sections which are exposed, that will just be carrying the load under under it. Okay, so this might be the load carried by that section if I will try to cut somewhere here. But if I will try to cut somewhere there a little bit higher or that that means it will now become since your curve is of course always going away so it means if i will cut a little bit higher it means that point which is a little bit higher is also a little bit farther from the lowest point okay so again if i will cut this here below that only carries the load some somewhere here the load applied in this part but if i will try to cut let's say almost near the support here if i try to cut section here that is now carrying almost all the loads okay a part of the almost all of the loads so that means that the higher we go from the lowest point or at the same time the farther we go away from the lowest point it means that the more stress the more stressed your uh cable is so relating this one or what do this one comparing this one with concentrated loads is that uh, at a certain segments if you say segments that is of course a point where a load is applied and a load is applied in your scenario of one ago okay your uh, stress within a segment okay or a straight line segment of one ago in your concentrated loads is equal. But in here, since again, we will assume that the application of load is just a matter of small distances between uh, these, of course, it means that that will now become variable. Okay? That makes it variable as we go on, as we move along the curve of the cable. And at the same time, considering the cable supported in both ends as shown in this figure, the tensile or the maximum tensile force is experienced at the highest point on the cable, of course. Again, just like what I'm explaining, the farther we go away from this uh, lowest point, the more stress the cable or the portion of the cable is. So first, since again, uh, this will be true to all the cables loaded with uniformly distributed load, except of course on the scenario of the catenary cable. Okay, by the way, to differentiate the catenary cable with this uniformly distributed load, since again, your catenary is also a uniformly distributed load. However, in catenary, the catenary is only uh, a catenary curve, okay, let's call it a catenary curve, is made due to the uh, distribution of its weight only, okay. So, for example, let's forget that that is not loaded. Let's say that is just a free hanging cable, then that will form what we call the catenary curve okay uh, if you want to know on the derivation or the uh, reason for that uh, there are other separate videos of other of course uh, other presented videos or other separated videos okay for that to to understand how is that catenary derived but for us again as i'm explaining since we have now an outside uniformly distributed load carried by that then that will now become this scenario okay which later on we will try to discuss what type of curve is this this will be a little bit simpler than what we call as the catenary okay since catenary will only happen if the only load uh, carried by the cable is its own weight okay so for this uh, let's try to establish a relationship which will be true in all scenario okay by the way for this scenario uh this is just example okay that the other end is lower than the other end but that could be the opposite okay this could be the lower and that could be the higher or it could be the same level so this will this derived relationship will be true okay or will be general for all those types so uh let's try to consider okay let me erase the reactions let's imagine this as this figure so we have points a and b and then we have the lowest point, let me call that one as A as O. Okay, let's call that one as O, doing O, lowest point. And then uh, let me consider an arbitrary point somewhere there or any point here. Okay, let's say that is point P. 
and then uh, as I'm explaining a while ago, we have here the horizontal, uh, I mean the lowest, I mean and the lowest point at point O, and as it goes away, the tensile within the cable is uh, changing due to the addition of the load as we go away from the lowest point. Okay? So I will try to cut and then expose, separate it here. Let's say, okay, uh, let me make your point O as the point of origin. Let's say we have here the X and Y. Okay, going to the right is positive X, up is positive Y. Okay, uh, then we will be having a distance since, okay, that is an, an arbitrary point. So let's say at a distance X from O, that is your point P. And then, of course, at the vertical, that will now become our Y since your O is your origin. So that makes it a variable. So even that is a point within any point here, then that will be general. Or on the other side, that will still, still be general. So let's try to consider the, uh, the load which is carried by that section. If I will cut somewhere here, you have the part of the uniformly distributed load which is to be carried by that. So let me convert that one as a concentrated load. So again, your intensity is W and the distance we are considering is X. So the concentrated load, uh, the equivalent of that will be W times the distance X. Okay? So that will be our resultant of the uniformly distributed load carried by this section. And then of course, we know that that is uniformly. So the concentrated load equivalent is located at the middle. So if that is X, then that will be X over 2. And then uh, let's say, since of course again your slope is changing, since that is a curve going up, your slope is changing from point to point. So let's call the uh, inclination theta as a theta, which is a variable, and that is from horizontal. Okay? Then actually if you will try to recall your uh, statics of rigid or your physics, we can create, since this is ecoplanar, it belongs to a single plane, and as you can see, we have here a horizontal, a vertical, and an inclined. Then actually, we can create here what we call as the force triangle. So actually, uh, again, that is discussed on your basic uh, mechanics. If we can create a force triangle that is going down and to the, uh, the horizontal, then this that makes your inclined tension T the hypotenuse. So if we will create this force triangle. Okay? So again, this is a coplanar force system. So we can use that one. So that makes that, uh, since how do you know that that is a right triangle? Because of course, this is a horizontal and this is a vertical. So the angle follows. And at the same time, your angle of T is uh, theta from horizontal. So it means that is also theta from your horizontal, which is represented by your TO. Again, let's say uh, your TO is the tensile at point O. Since actually, that needs to be uh, established. Since actually, the component is of force at point O. Okay, going back to our explanation a while ago that, okay, here. So, the tensile force acting on a cable is always tangent to the cable at the points along its length. Okay, so that is our uh, reason to say Okay, to say that your uh, force at the lowest point is only TO or only horizontal. Okay, how is that again? Since if you will try to consider this point here, that is the lowest point, then a tangent, a tangent line to that point is only the horizontal. So it means if your horizontal is the tangent uh, force, then that means that is the only force acting since there will be no vertical component since actually the slope of that is a zero or that is a plainly horizontal line of action. So again, at that point, at that lowest point, the only force acting to that is a horizontal tensile force. There is no vertical component of that, okay, since that is perfectly horizontal. So that needs to be established since later on that will be our basis in getting the tensile force along its uh, length within the inclined location, okay, within the inclined location. So that is what we need to establish, the tensile force at the lowest point. And actually, that is the smallest or that is the least tensile force within the length of the cable, okay. So that's it. Uh, we need to establish that one.
Let's uh, call it as T sub O. So again, in the first triangle, you have T sub O, and then we have WX, and then you have your T as the hypotenuse. So by Pythagorean theorem again, you can now get the square of the hypotenuse as equivalent to the square of both legs summation. And then get the square of both sides, you have this T. Again, what is T? That is the tensile force at any location within the inclined points. So it means that that could be any point within this except your O. And then any point on the left side. Okay? So that is the tensile at any location. So it is a function of the tensile at the lowest point. And then your intensity loading, loading intensity W, and then the location of that point horizontally, which is x. Okay? So that is again uh, a function of the T sub O, and then your W, and then your x. Location, horizontal distance from the lowest point. Okay? And then uh, using still this, the same force triangle, we can actually relate, okay, if you need to find out later on the angle, the angle of the force at that point, then actually that is theta, that is the uh, inclination. So from this right triangle, we can actually uh, relate. You can actually relate by means of, ten, uh, of uh, tangent, sine or cosine, it's up to you. But uh, for me, I'd rather, I want to use the uh, original values, the T, O, and W, X. So that in case I will be having a problem with T, I will not be affecting the slope, okay? So I want to, st to use this uh, adjacent and the opposite, so that makes it tangent. Tangent theta is the opposite, Wx, and then all over To. So again, your slope is actually uh, a function of your W and X, and then the horizontal. So still, again, that is how important establishing your T sub O. So later on, now uh, let's try to... Uh, next is, of course, to establish a relationship of TO, okay, of TO with uh, any point. So that given a location, we can actually calculate the value of your horizontal, horizontal tensile at the lowest point. Okay, so considering this segment OP, okay, this one, where we get your force triangle, let's take a moment at P. Okay, there are three forces actually. Your T, your T sub O, and then your uh, your resultant force WX. So if I were to take, since I want to establish this TO as a function of the uh, load itself and the distance, I want to take a moment of T, let's say, let's say clockwise positive, then we'll be having this TO as a clockwise and the moment arm will be Y. Okay? Y is again the location of point uh, under consideration uh, with with respect to the origin, which we choose as the lowest point. So that is a y distance. So therefore, taking a moment, your T sub O will have a moment of y positive, let's say clockwise positive, and then this goes counterclockwise, and then that is Wx with a moment arm of, okay, half of the distance, x, which is x over 2. Then simple algebra, playing around with this, this goes positive, that is going uh, Wx squared over 2, and then you have your TO times Y, but I want to separate Y. So cross multiply TO or divide both sides by TO, you will have your TO below. So you will have now this equation that the Y coordinate of any point is equal to W over 2 times TO times the uh, horizontal, okay, horizontal distance X of that point is squared. So again, Y is equal to W over 2 TO times x squared, quantity times x squared. So it means, look at this, your w is actually a constant since that is the loading intensity. Your to is also constant since that is not affected. Okay? As long as the load is applied in the orientation of the uh, cable is known, that to is already, we can already establish that one. Now that is already constant in it. So that is not changing also. That to is not changing. The only one changing is the value of the actual tensile as we go along the cable, okay, considering any points within the cable. But still, your TO here is not changing, and of course your W, so that makes it constant. So if you are considering this equation, it is actually an equation of X and Y, 
or in your y is linear and your x is squared or second degree, then this is in algebra or in analytic geometry, this equation is actually a parabolic curve. Okay? Only one of the variables is squared, which is x. So actually, this is a parabolic curve. Okay? Parabolic curve since this is just a constant. Therefore, if this is an equation of parabolic curve, then that makes this curve a parabola. Okay? So we can now say, we can now say that any cable subjected to an external uniformly distributed load, okay, except the catenary of course, is following a shape of parabolic curve. Okay, it's following a shape of parabolic curve. Then, uh, if that is parabolic curve, then we can make use of this uh, established equation or relationship of the coordinate of the point, any any point within the curve as a distance from the lowest point considered as the origin. Okay, so uh, horizontal that is the x distance and the vertical is the y distance. Okay, so now using this re uh, derived relationships, we can actually solve whatever is being asked within this uh, cable loaded with UDM. Okay. So, let's try to have an example. A girder weighing 12 kN per meter is supported by a cable as shown in this figure. And then, what we're going to do is to determine the tensile force at each end and at the lowest point. So, that is what we're after. The tensile force within your support, okay, just within the support and then the lowest point. Okay, and that is... Uh, that is carrying a uniformly distributed load from the deck. Okay, let's say this is a bridge. Uh, we have a girder or a deck to be carrying a uniformly distributed load 12 km per meter. Okay. Then we have these dimensions. So from the lowest point, it is given here, lowest point to the support A is 12 meters and the uh, lowest point to the support B is 6 meters. That is the only given. It is not yet located where the lowest point is. So that is for us to establish, okay? Because if we will try to go here, we cannot actually solve something without knowing or without establishing the lowest point. So that is the first thing for us to do. Locate the lowest point, okay? Locate the lowest point and how are we going to locate that? Using the established equation of parabola of this loaded cable, okay? y is equal to w over 2to times the x squared, okay? So, how will we solve the location of this? So, let's say, okay, let, let's make this distance here from the lowest to the point B as x. Or you can use the other side. You can say that this is x. So, it's up to you. Uh, so, if let me say for our scenario, for our uh, solution, let's say this is x. Then, if this is uh, given to be 30, then that gives us this distance to be 30 minus x, okay? Then, of course, uh, using the known points, since these are the known points, uh, and we know that this point A is vertical distance 12, and that point here is vertical distance 6. So, we will be using these points. So, let's start at point A. So, the horizontal location of that is, okay, as you can see, 30 minus x. Actually, you can consider here uh, sign conventions. So, you, can, you might be considering here, since that is on the left of the origin, you can say that is negative. But even if you will consider that distance as negative, later on, we will be substituting that as x squared. So, that gives us a positive. So, actually, it doesn't matter if you will consider it as uh, positive or negative. It will still be cancelled out. Okay, so for simplicity, I want to use just the value. So, 30 minus x. So, that is the x distance of this point A. And then the vertical that is given to be 12. So, we will now be substituting to this equation. Uh, so, your y is 12. Your w, we know that one to be 12. Your t sub o, that is the unknown, one of the unknown. And then your x, we will substitute that as a function of x is t. So, we will have a function or an equation of t o, which is with respect to x. So, we cannot solve t o or x here. So, first, we need to create another equation, and that is actually using the point b. So at point B, we know that the x distance is the one established as distance x. And then the y is the 6 meters. 
substituting these values, so x will remain x, 6 will be y. Simplifying, you will have this equation 2 as uh, simply to equals x squared. So, using this equation 1 and 2, let me substitute equation 2 to your equation 1. So, to will just become x squared. And then, we will now have one unknown, only a, a variable x. So, simplifying this one, you will have x squared plus 60x minus 900. So, this is the quadratic equation. It's up to you how you will calculate. You can use uh, completing this square. You can use factoring, but I, I doubt this could be factored out by a whole number. So, you can use completing this square or you can use quadratic formula. So, those are methods from algebra, of course. So, using those methods, we can calculate two values of x since, as you can see, that is squared. So, it means there are two values of x. But one value of x is a negative, which makes it not reasonable since our distance, as you can see, positive. Since, as you can see, that is a mainly distance, okay, plainly distance. So, we can neglect this distance x, which is a negative. And we will be considering the positive value, which is 12.426. And actually, if you will try to reason out this negative 72, or you can say that is 72, that is out of the picture, since the length of the cable is only 30. So the reasonable value for that is 12.426. Okay, that is within the distance 30 meters. Therefore, if that's the x that I will be considering, so that is the location of B from the lowest point, or it means that is the location of lowest point from D. So that gives us TO. Okay, you can use any equation here. You can you should end up with exactly the same TO. Since actually we use these two equations to calculate x. So let's let me use equation two since that is simpler. Substitute x that we solve. Substitute here. When you get the square, you will have T sub O. That is the tensile at the lowest point to be 154.41. Okay. Since you already established this, then actually we can calculate any tensile at any point within the cable. As long as we know the location of that by means of its distance x and y, of course, or ordinate, coordinate x and y. So now we can calculate the tensile force at its support, since we know already the lowest point. So your support is at A and B. So let's say... Tensile force at any point. Again, this is what we established a while ago. That is just a function of your horizontal at the lowest point. Horizontal tensile force at the lowest point and the W and its horizontal distance x. Okay. So, if we will substitute the T sub O, that will be constant. And then your W is constant. So, the only one changing is actually the uh, coordinate. X coordinate of the point under consideration. So at point A, the horizontal of that, uh, since we calculated the x, this x of only go as 12.426. Therefore, the is value here is 30 minus x. All you need to do is subtract that 12.426 from 30. You will end up with x of A to be, again, you can consider a negative or you can make it still as positive. Since in our equation, substituting that, that will be still squared. So it means even a negative and positive, that will still be positive. So let me just consider the distance. 17.574, substitute that as our x, and that will be squared. And then simplifying, you will have tensile at A to be 261.73. Okay? And then at point B, we know that the x distance of that is your x of while ago. 12.426 substitute that one, you will have 214.66 kilometers. So now we calculated all the unknowns. The tensile at the lowest point, which is only a horizontal, plainly horizontal, which is your T sub O, which is your 154.41. Okay, go. 154.41. And then at B, that is 214.66, and then at A, 261.37. So actually, we can reason out the result. Since the lowest point, that should have the lowest value of tensile. Again, since as we go away from the lowest point, our tensile force is supposed to be increasing. So it means that this is the lowest point. That should have the lowest value, which is true, 1 by 4. And then this B is lower or a little bit closer compared to A. So that should give us a lower tensile at B compared to A which is true based on this value. Okay, since by the way, we 
uh, proved a while ago that this curve follows the parabolic curve then if I will try to cut a horizontal plane passing at B then that will be cutting your parabola uh, asymmetric part okay for in this section passing at D will have the same stress at which point this will be passing through on this other side so again uh, since this is parabolic curve these stresses are symmetrical so let's say at a certain point here that will be the same stress uh, which is the same location vertically on the other side okay so if i will try to cut section somewhere here along b then that will be the same stress as the stress on this other side b okay so those are our discussion for cables so in case you have questions uh, please feel free to ask or we will be discussing that one on our next live meeting so thank you very much for watching